my friends! Welcome! I am going to be continuing the good old Biscuits Factory, um, but just so we can uh, have a quick recap on everything that we have done, uh, initially we landed on this planet after being ejected from space from our uh, evil overlords uh, up in the sky. They told us that we had to pillage the resources of the land to survive and meet the goals that they have arbitrarily set. Uh, I then have started building my base after setting up a rudimentary amount of uh, concrete and iron and a little bit of copper. Uh, and then I gloated a bit. Uh, so now I am going to uh, continue on with that. Uh, there's obviously a lot that we have to do, but I'm going to try and explain things as we go. Um, initially, what I'm going to do is probably focus more on the iron than anything, um, because whilst technically I am getting stuff that is made outside of the factory at the moment, uh, it's much more important to set up the iron first, as that's the resource we use pretty much constantly. Uh, so give me a second, I will remove what we have here, uh, and then we shall get started. Okay, so that's the um, initial bit of iron um, deleted. So, what is <laughs> what is explained uh, when you first get here is essentially, um, initially you have to work on getting the hub up and running, as that's, uh, ironically enough, the hub of where you'd get everything done. Um, for our purposes, though, it primarily um, deals with these biomass burners at early game, uh, as they are our only way of generating electricity. Uh, so for the moment, uh, it's pretty much just hooked up for the iron purposes to come to our Miner Mark 1 here. Uh, so the miners pick up the resources from the ground automatically and you can get them to have the conveyor belt to come out with the resources. Currently this one is holding 100 because it's just mining with nowhere to go. Um, after we have the miner, oh, we push the right buttons, uh, we come into production and first of all we want to smelt down the product. Um, so essentially it turns it from a uh, original raw resource into a usable resource for us. Uh, so in this case, to turn it into iron ingots. Um, so what I'll do is I'll quickly just run a conveyor belt from this uh, over here. Uh, and because I know Chris Ooh, ooh, likes things to be pretty. Yeah, I will actually set it up so it lines up fairly roughly with where it has to go. Um, obviously this will change in the future when we get more miners in here to deal with more iron, because one, I can guarantee you right now, will not be enough for the future, but for right now it should do. Um, obviously everything needs electricity. Uh, these power poles they can have, oh, oh, wrong thing, there we go. They can have up to four um, things coming off of it. Uh, I usually have it so one goes from where it started into here, one goes off into a new power pole that can be used later, and then have another thing come off, and then you could have two, up to two coming off of it into more things. Um, but that's how I do it. Uh, some people do it differently. Uh, I'm going to just quickly chuck all of this iron in here so I don't have to hold it all in my inventory. Um, we do have things such as splitters and mergers that I will get to in a second that are going to help all of this, but for now, this is just creating the iron ingots. Um, we need the iron ingots uh, to essentially make everything from there, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, so from the iron ingots coming out of the smelter, we go straight into a constructor. And then you set the constructors to what we need. Uh, so they have all of these recipes and they will get significantly more recipes in the future. Uh, but for us at the moment, these are the three things that we pretty much need just constant supplies of. Uh, so I'll set it to iron plates for the moment. Uh, and as usual, I need more power. Eh. And eh, and now it will make iron plates. Yeah, look at it go. Uh, and then from here, I put them into containers. 
Uh, at some point, I will probably put the storage upstairs, but as of right now, we don't really have an upstairs, as we don't even have a completely finished downstairs yet, so just ignore her over there for now. Um, but that's the basic premise of how this game goes. You get the resources from the ground, put them onto a conveyor belt, they go into a machine that converts them into something usable, which then goes into more machines to convert them into other usable things. Uh, pretty much the ingots themselves don't get used for anything specifically, so you always have to have a constructor going into something um, to turn it into an actual usable resource. Um, so now that we have our iron plating going, we also want to use some iron rods. Um, so what I usually do is I check the output of what this can do. So currently it's doing 60 per minute of the iron. And I know that these conveyor belt Mark 1s can also do 60 resources per minute. So those two are balanced and one won't overtake the other. So they're as good as they can go. These, however, will only take 30 per minute. So one minor Mark 1 with Mark 1 conveyor belts can support two of our smelters. So I am just going to have two smelters. This way we can eh, make things nice and pretty. Now, to be able to get it to basically have two smelters on the one line, is you need these splitters. Oh, and I need cables for it. Okay, one second, I'll be back with cables. Okay, I'm back. Um, so ignoring all of that, when you have the resources for it, you put the splitter, you can put them directly onto a line, or you can place them on the ground and have lines going to them. Because I've already got this line set up, I just put the splitter directly onto it to save having to delete all of this and then redo it all. Um, up to you if you want to do it the other way, but for me this is just the easiest, fastest way because obviously everything is already set up. Um, in the future when I'll be readjusting things, uh, such as when like, walls come in here, we'll have to change where the conveyor belts are coming in, uh, all of this will be deleted and redone. Uh, as well as when we get more miners coming in so they don't horribly, horribly clip into each other. Um, I'll be probably moving all of those lines. But for now, this should, over time, balance itself perfectly fine. So all of the iron coming in here will balance out with the iron that's coming in here, and then this one won't ever be idle, is the theory. However, I will say my experience experience in the matter is that it uh, doesn't realistically work out that way. Um, so, uh, I've currently got the two um, smelters going, and I've now got the two constructors. Once I hook this one up to power, it will then start making the iron rods. The other thing to note Every single machine has both the input and output to consider when you're trying to balance things. If you're trying to make an efficient factory, you have to balance the loads in one way or another. This is, generally speaking, done a lot differently once we get um, the smart splitters, because the smart splitters can essentially just balance everything automatically. But until we have the smart splitters, we have to do it all manually, so we have to check that the input is matching the current line, so this one's getting 30 out of the 60 on the line, and the other one is also getting 30. So they're balanced, then the output, so this one's currently producing 30 of the iron plates, and this one needs 30 iron plates, oh sorry, iron ingots to come in. So currently this one is working at 100% peak efficiency there's nothing more we can realistically do to get the iron plates to go faster. This one, however, you'll notice it only takes 15 per minute in and to do 15 rods out, while this one produces 30 out. So currently, this one has 200% more iron ingots coming in than it needs. So what I usually do at this point is create a splitter here, so essentially half will go into this one, half will go into another one, uh, so then we have basically more constructors going at the usual rate. The easier way, 
Um, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you here, Anita, and possibly Chris, but the easiest way to get another constructor if you don't have a hotkey for it is to press the F for delete, and then middle click, and you get the other item, well, that thing you were pointing at, um, chosen again. So, give me a hot second, I will get the requirements for this constructor, and then we will continue on with our iron. Uh, so, I'm back! Alright, and we're back. So, from here, I grab the constructor, place it down, and now what we'll do is we'll set this one also to iron rods, because the screws, as you can see down the bottom here, need iron rods, so they can't just go from the ingots to screws. You have to go ingots to rods to screws. So, for the initial setup, uh, with just a very basic layout, I get one constructor uh, initially to do screws, and then I get a splitter to do like this setup here where it's double screws, and then another constructor after this, about here we'll do for now, um, where this one then goes into screws. Uh, so I will just quickly steal power from... Oh, more cable. Alright, uh, give me a second. I'm just going to quickly set up the power so I can power up these things. Uh, and more movie magic. I'll be back! Okay, and just like that, we now have power. Um, so, uh, this one is set. I believe I set this one. Yes, excellent. Now, I am going to set up the splitters so they can go nicely. Uh, as I said before, you can just set them on a line that's already existing, so you don't have to double set them. But if you want to make a nice right angle, you get it so the lines show up here, uh, so it says that it's in line with this one, and then go back two spaces when you're on the foundations. And then, just like that, you get a nice perfect little right angle. Uh, occasionally it will be a smidge out by like a couple pixels and stuff, but I honestly don't worry too much. Oh, my power is gone. Give me a second. It's biomass, so everything is manual. Okay, so the turns out the problem that I had was I had too many machines on my power system, and the two little um, power um, power stations there couldn't keep up, so I just had to make a couple more biomass burners, but eh, that's not really all that interesting, so I figured you guys wouldn't care missing that. Um, but, now that we've done this splitter, eh, we just come directly into this one. This one is set. Technically, this one is producing 15 rods, and this only takes 10. You can do an awful lot of complicated things to basically have them balance so all the excess output can come to another storage bin, but I'm not going to care about that. So, I'm going to just have a little storage stack. It is not my favourite method uh, to deal <laughs> with things like this, um, but considering how little space there is actually in this part, I want to keep this somewhat clean where I can. Um, so for now, I'm just going to have that one go directly up like that, because it's nice and easy. And then this one, I'm going to... Hopefully I have... Yes, I do have. Use the lifterators. Uh, about that high looks good. Um, and then have that go into the top one. Yeah, slightly too high, but that's fine. That's good. Uh, and then this way I can use the ladders that are on the side and just climb up to each thing and just have a look into them as I climb to see the resources. Um, but this is essentially the bare bones basic branch of um, iron. Uh, obviously, as everything does, as we get further and further in the game, this will get more and more complicated. Uh, our um, our requirements for iron is just constant throughout the game. There's nothing we can do to prevent or reduce the amount of iron. Uh, so this will be a constant burden that we're always going to be coming back to. But for now, I believe that should be a nice little, nice little explanation slash demo of satisfactory. Uh, I can say that once you get into the nitty gritty of trying to figure out all the 
load balancing and how much you can actually make it can get a little bit fun. I personally really enjoy it. Um, up until near the end game where you're just having to produce mass, like just so super massive amounts of resources to meet each goal. But we're going to get there together. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to say um, farewell for this episode. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I suppose I'll see you next time. Okay, bye!